But tell me about the design, the architecture. Well, it's a, a, a classical building, but um, it's not a pastiche or a copy of 18th century classical. It's a classical building of the 1950s or of the 20th century. So uh, it is classically detailed. It's got Corinthian columns. It's got the, uh, the proportions, the, uh, the detailing of a classical building. But at the same time, it's, uh, in some ways, it's, it looks more of a 30s building than it um, than really a 50s building on the outside. And that might be because it was conceived before the war. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Bennett, when, when he first began developing his plan with Wilbur in the late 20s, we're going to move the center of campus to where the library is now. They're going to dramatically increase, increase the whole scope of campus. And so the library was always the centerpiece of Bennett's plan of development. But it was the last building really to be built under the plan. Uh, and so all these other buildings were developed before the library comes along. The key element of design, though, that, that Wilbur and Lowe were involved with was they wanted it to be open, open stacks. Uh, prior to that, most libraries, a patron would come to a desk and say, I want this book. A staff member would go get that book, retrieve it, and then, and then give it to the person. And see, Lowe wanted to have an open stack system where anybody could more or less help themselves. So it changed how they, how they laid out the building. Was this one of the first libraries to do that? Or? One of the first libraries to have open stacks. There were other libraries that did it, but at that scale, we were, we were kind of on the cutting edge.